Hey everyone, it's Lene. Today is Thursday, March 14th, 2019. So this video is going to explain the process of legally changing one's name. One of my wonderful subscribers suggested that I do a video on this topic. So let's begin. I must mention that the laws vary state by state. I currently reside in Colorado in the United States. However, in other countries, the laws might be different. So if you are in a state other than Colorado, I suggest that you go to the National Center for Trans Equality, their website, transequality.org, you can find them. There they will give you state-specific information on the name change process in your particular state. I decided that legally changing my name is one of the steps in my transition that I would like to take in the year 2019. I heard that the process can be rather lengthy, depending on your state. Fortunately for me, however, Colorado has laws in place favoring those who have the desire to change their name. Any resident over the age of 18 who has not been convicted of a felony can file a petition. So I took the first step back in late January I was referred to the Colorado Name Change Project's website, namechangeproject.org. Here they provide you with all the necessary information that you will need. They also have a handy flowchart available, laying out all of the steps from start to finish. But for me, it's been a frustrating process so far. Firstly, I filled out a form from the website for a legal name change. Next, I had to get fingerprinted for an FBI as well as a CBI, which stands for Colorado Bureau of Investigation, background check. I had to drive about an hour into downtown in order to do this. Finding parking was somewhat difficult, too. Once I arrived at the office, the lady there told me that the CBI fingerprinting system was down. I was pretty upset especially because I had spent over an hour driving through a snowstorm in order to get down there safely. They could have at least notified me via text, call, or an email saying that their system was down and that I would have to reschedule my appointment, but they didn't. So she recommended another location which had free parking, but I would have to go through the process of rescheduling my appointment with them. So I scheduled it for the following Friday. The new location was even a longer distance away. This time, the weather was clear. So after arriving there, I was expecting to be in and out within 20 minutes or so. Boy, was I wrong. I had to create a profile for their new system while I was there. The ladies who were working there were pretty new, so that slowed down the process even more. I had to pay two separate fees, one for the CBI and the second for the FBI, fingerprints and background checks. All of this took over an hour to complete, and by the time I left that day, rush hour was in full swing. My CBI results came back within a couple of days. The FBI results took about two weeks to get to me. I also received a notarized copy of the CBI results. I put it away for safekeeping, knowing that I would need it later. So after about three and a half weeks, I was still waiting for the FBI results to arrive in the mail. They had already sent the results via email. I was under the impression that I would need an actual mailed copy of the results in order to submit everything at the courthouse. That week at support group, I found out that it could possibly take months to receive the mailed FBI results and that they will accept the emailed results from the FBI. And a day or two after that, I received the FBI results in the mail. So I had everything that I needed. I was ready to file my petition downtown at the courthouse. So that Thursday, I gathered all of my documents and headed down to the county court office. I had to go through security in my corset that I'm waist training with kept setting off the alarm. I had to explain to the security guard that I was wearing a steel bone corset underneath. 
She gave me the okay to pass through anyway without removing it, thank God. That would have been a big hassle. So I find the room that I need to go to, and I was waiting there for a little while in line. Soon the guy calls me up to the counter and asks to see my paperwork. After looking through everything, he asked if I had the notarized document for the CBI background check. I was confused. I thought for certain that I had everything that I needed. Instead, I only had the receipt for the fee that I paid for the CBI background check and fingerprints. But that wasn't enough. So I had to call the fingerprinting office. While I was with him, they had me on hold for a couple of minutes. Then a lady answers the phone. She told me that she would have to transfer me over to someone who could mail another notarized document. And right when she transfers me, it goes to voicemail. Just my luck, right? <laughs> I was terribly disappointed. I had come all this way to find out that I am missing some of the necessary paperwork to file my petition for a name change to receive my court date. There was nothing more that I could do except to look through all of my important documents once I got home. I was thinking to myself, maybe I misplaced it somewhere, but I had been dealing with a lot, you know, unemployment, Medicaid, and some other personal things too, that I completely forgot that they sent the notarized document to me and that I put it away somewhere safe. I should have kept everything together, but that was the first document that I had received in the mail. So I knew that if I found what I needed once I returned home, I could come back tomorrow, the next morning, to file a petition and get a court date. So as I was driving in my car, leaving the courthouse, I noticed something on my front windshield that one of my wiper blades was holding in place. I was able to get out of my car shortly after while I was stopped at the stoplight to find out what it was. It was a parking ticket for $75. I thought to myself, hey, this couldn't be right. I was only parked there for 25 minutes and I paid for 45. Why would they issue me a citation for that? I didn't break the law. So I called the number that was on the back side of the ticket. It was because my front license plate was missing from my front bumper. Here in Colorado, they require that you have a rear plate displayed as well as a front license plate displayed on your vehicle. I know not all states require that, but this state for some reason does. I had my front bumper replaced a few months ago. I was going to purchase a nice frame for my license plate before I put it on, but I never got around to doing it. And honestly, I would forget to do it sometimes. So he told me that I can dispute the ticket and provide pictures showing that I now have my front plate properly displayed on my car. I also submitted a dispute as well as photos showing that I'm no longer in violation. It's been about a week and a half now and I'm still waiting for a decision from them to hear back from them. I'm hoping that they'll throw out the ticket. I could really use the $75 for something else. Besides, I have a clean parking and driving history. And I think that I have been pretty good with that if I do say so myself. So getting back to the name change process and that missing document, guess what? Yes. <laughs> I found the notarized CBI document locked away in my briefcase in a letter-sized white envelope. It was exactly what I needed. So the next morning, I did the same thing, only this time I was successful. As I was parallel parking downtown that morning, it felt like my right rear tire was going on the curb, and I knew that I would have to pull forward just a little bit, just a hair, in order to park correctly. I was in a pretty tight spot. There was very limited parking that morning, maybe because it was a Friday. There was a car parked in front of me and a truck parked behind me. So as I'm slowly pulling forward to reposition my car, my front bumper tapped the car in front of me. I wasn't sure whether or not if I made contact with the other vehicle. Then a lady gets out of that parked car 
I got out and asked if my vehicle made contact with hers. She said yes. She felt her car move. She said that she was having lunch in her car. I told her that I was terribly sorry. Luckily, no damage had been done to either of our vehicles. And it turns out that it was actually a sheet of ice that my right rear tire was going over, not the curb. Then I asked her if she'd be willing to pull forward just a little so that I can park properly. She was kind of reluctant to do it at first, but eventually she did. So I finally parallel parked my car safely, fed the meter 35 minutes worth of loose change, then headed inside. This time around, I knew for a fact that I had everything. The same guy from the day before, with the funny mustache, assisted me. Everything went well. He gave me the option of paying both the notary fee and the court fee. But due to things being pretty tight for me right now, after losing my job back in January, I chose to only pay the $88 notary fee. He directed me to the cashier's office and told me to return with my receipt in hand. Initially, he offered me the court date of March 29th. I ultimately chose April 5th, which is on a Friday. I should still have enough time to get a new driver's license, change my gender marker, and possibly apply for a new passport. Well, I thought I'd share with you how I chose my name, Lene Marie. So last year, I took a trip to the Netherlands. I was staying in a town called Leiden this particular night. Years before, there was a YouTuber on YouTube whose name was Vene. And I always liked that name because it was unusual. I was going to call myself Vene after her. However, I decided that after having that dream that night, because as I was waking up, the name Lene came to me in Leiden, in the Netherlands. I was doing an Airbnb there. I woke up in the middle of the night, early that morning, and the rest is history. But I wanted to know the origins of the name. I'm actually out of notes, by the way, so I'm speaking without any notes. Bear with me. So I was curious about the origins of the name Lene, spelled L-A-N-A-E. It's a girl's name, and it's not a common name. It derives from the name Lana, and the name Lene has origins in the Hawaiian language, but it's a variant of English, Greek, and Russian for the name Lana. And I read somewhere that it means beautiful one, but I don't know if that's accurate. I was looking for it earlier as I was doing research. I can't seem to find where I read that last year. And there have been other names that I've thought about, but the name Lene, I've come to like it. And there's a very slim chance of me running into others who share the same name as I do. And that can be tricky at times, so most likely I won't have to deal with that. But I'm still going through the name change process. Hopefully, from here on out, things will be a lot smoother than they have been. To all a good day, God bless, and don't be a stiff. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, let's get all of our giggles out. <laughs>